For me, it's useful to think of FRAM as a flexible method rather than a dogma and a tool that might have many potential uses. In my work, I've applied and modified FRAM to look at positive resonance and how performance can be amplified to allow a system to flourish rather than stall. FRAM is broken down into four steps. Firstly, it asks us to identify and describe the normal functions required to achieve a goal. Then we look at the potential for variability in how these functions might be performed. The third step is where functional resonance comes into play, as we assess how the variability of each function impacts the other functions up and downstream. Fram's hexagonal graphical notations helps us track and identify these links. The final step is monitoring and managing this performance variability. As an example, we consider the introduction of a new collaborative robot in a factory. FRAM could be used to help us determine what impact the system could have on the factory as a whole, above and beyond the work it would carry out. If the staff in the factory have been consulted about its introduction and it was designed in collaboration with the existing team, then the human workers may accept its arrival more readily. The robot can then undertake its tasks more effectively and human workers are able to focus on tasks more in line with their skills and experiences. In other words, the sum is bigger than its parts. But implementing an autonomous system such as this can be problematic if the human-machine interaction has not been thoroughly thought through and tested. By using FRAM and its hexagonal graphical notation, it's possible to assess how these human-robot functions may interact and influence one another, so they positively resonate together. By doing so, we can improve the system as a whole. I don't use FRAM for looking at functional resonance. For me, FRAM's non-linear representation is useful for thinking about relationships as a web of connections. Its particular style of mapping was something that I could adapt to support research into software safety practices in industry. We suspect there's a gap between theory and practice when it comes to managing software and safety-related systems, and we suspect there are socio-technical reasons behind these differences. And to explore these gaps, we created three models using FRAM. One, the model of idealized best practice, or workers desired, the software safety process defined by the organization, or workers described, and three, the actual process in reality, or workers done. Comparing the three models helps us to gain a better understanding of the causes of these differences, and FRAM was the perfect starting point for developing the models due to its inherent simplicity in representing process interactions, dependencies, and constraints. By adding colours and additional elements such as artefacts to the basic FRAM models, you can move away from modelling resonance for successes and failures in safety systems and use FRAM to model work as desired versus work as described versus work as done or standards or anything really.